Hello and welcome to The Sheer Luck Show. I'm Olivia Wayne and joining me today on the sofa are Polly Sayer, uh, Heather Steele and Sheer Luck's contributor and beauty guru, Lisa Potter-Dixon. Later on I'm going to take a nose inside Lisa's makeup bag to have a look at all her summer essentials that we need to be using too. I'm also going to be joined by Noor Hibbert, author of the new literary sensation, Just Fucking Do It. Get her tips on becoming the best version of you. But first, let's have a little bit of chat, shall we? Polly, Hello. you went to Wimbles. I Tell us did. all about it. Yeah, I was very kindly hosted by Evian, who had me in their VIP suite, which was very special. And we also got to watch some great tennis. So who we did you see? One. I saw Serena Williams against uh, Julia Gjurgis. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. No one will remember um, her anyway. Yeah. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Serena was incredible. Like, oh. she's probably the greatest of all time, isn't she? So she is. She very is Very special. And then Joanna Conter as well, who played oh, amazingly. It was a really exciting game. So, yeah, it was a very fun day. It was my first time. So. Your first time at Wimbledon? First time. Oh, I know. What an experience, have oh, it? It's I not know. always like the other people. Yeah, always going to do it, right? <laughs> Let me tell you guys. Not that you're queuing from 4 a.m. No, <laughs> you're not about that life. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, talk to us about fashion, because obviously yes. that's your focus so, sometimes. Well, yeah, we had some good looks on the day that I went. So, uh, there was Jordana Brewster, who's an actress. I was sat next to her, actually, and she was in a beautiful blue frock and I think there might be some pictures going up so we can see those but was also Viscountess Emma Weymouth who was in a really nice sort of ruffled white dress as well with some really cool round sunglasses. She always looks lovely doesn't yeah, she? Yeah always looks Dressing amazing. up for Wimbledon is kind of a thing. I mean obviously if you're being hosted and it's all quite elegant yeah. but it is nice to make a special yes, day of it I think. 100%. And also it's quite a like clean nice way of yes. you know you're not going to be like trashed at the end. Hopefully. Well, they have yeah, a lot of well. rules as well, right? So you can't wear jeans, you can't wear trainers, you have to wear yeah. certain things anyway. So you might as well make the effort. It's almost like yeah. going to a wedding, I think. Yeah, yeah. it is that kind of look. But can't you choose, like, hope? Oh, I was wearing flats for yeah. sure, but I like, I wore a nice, you know, my blue jumpsuit I'll put on the show. Oh, but very nice. <laughs> get another outfit. <laughs> yeah, hey, cost for wear, so working for Exactly, 100%. <laughs> Heather, do you, do you watch any of the tennis? I, I don't really get tennis. I still can't ever quite work my head around. Tennis. No, but then I, the scoring, I'm always, I still don't quite understand. <laughs> Go every, with your camera <laughs> but every Wimbledon, I start off like, oh, I'm not going to watch it because I don't get it. And then by yeah, week two, I'm like fully invested like and into such it. It's great yeah. entertainment. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Lisa, are you a fan? I am. And um, I work with quite a few of the players. So I absolutely love tennis. For Wimbledon, I'm not going to lie, the rest of the year, not, that really bothered. not bothered by your spawn. Yeah. No, I fear my husband, he's got it all and all the time. Yeah. And but when it gets to Wimbledon, I'm yeah. like, yes. Yeah. And then when Andy, I mean, I'm just so uh, happy yeah. that Andy and Serena <laughs> yeah. are doing that double. That's and great. I'm just so, I just think it's genius and amazing. But there's nothing like it. There's nothing no. like Wimbledon. It's so British, I agree. Isn't it? It's so, br- it's and so the, British. the flower, it's not going to the Hampton Court back. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> And also, like, the food, the drink, the pims. Yeah. 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 And pims. the strawberries. Like, mm-hmm. it's a great day out. Yeah, it is. So, get queuing overnight and get your tents <laughs> out, because it's definitely where, and Henman Hill, like the drama. It's yeah. just nothing like it. Right, Prince Archie was christened this weekend. What did you think of the outfits? Have you seen? Did you see? Do you care? What you know? Talk to me. Yeah. It was. I, I feel like there was a nice pastel vibe going on. Very yeah. summery. Yeah. Mm. I thought Kate actually looked the best. She, she looked lovely. Amazing, didn't she? She had that full headband trend going on. Yes. But what I loved about that is that she didn't match it to her outfit. She went for a richer tone, like more of a jewel tone headband with yeah, the yeah. headband. Sorry, with the peachy pink outfit and I love that. Yeah. I actually really commend Kate on her bravery because I feel like that's not yeah. very her. Obviously her sister wore the headband. Mm. She's a bit like, oh, mm. let's do this. Get yeah. on the but trend. again, she has it like placed for her, which I think is the whole key of the headband trend, yeah. mm-hmm. personally. Yeah. Heather? Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I like a good christening. I went to one quite recently and realised how much I like it as an occasion. So, yeah. I, well, we didn't watch it, obviously, because it was all quite private this time. Yeah, so what did you think of the privacy element? I'm all for it. I know some people feel like they're getting things stolen from them from not having this kind of really good insight into their lives in the way that we have with other royals. Mm. But I think, you know... Harry's not going to be on the throne at any stage unless something horrid happens. So I think it is just, yeah, like, why not? He's just fucking doing it. Exactly. (laughs) He is. Yeah, I'm all for it. I think, yeah, they've just had a kid, of course. And Harry's had many a front page moment for the wrong reasons. He has, yeah. You know what? If he can control what he can control, why shouldn't he? Exactly. No, I'm all for it. Do you care that we don't know who the godparents are? Would you even know of them anyway? I would say I'm like a a royalist, but I don't feel like we need to know every aspect. Right. Do okay. we? No, no, like I, I probably wouldn't know who they were anyway. There'd probably be some sort of distance. Also, it's kind of like those lovely Dukes. days of, I guess, 
like the pre-social media days, like a little bit of mystique. Yeah. It just makes it all a bit more exciting. Yeah. And yeah. I don't yeah. think I even know who my godparents are. I've only got some. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's just kind of like... Touche, but fair enough. All right, well, hopefully Archie will know and he'll like them. Um, okay, we have a feature on the site today about how the majority of us only take, on average, a 16-minute lunch break. Mm. Now... We discussed before, we're not really in industries where you get a lunch break, mm. but if you do work in nine to five or whatever, you two, what's your, how long is your lunch break? Do you get a lunch break? Do you take it if you do? We're, we're given a lunch break, but yeah. I think most of us, you know, is don't that take... Is a legal don't requirement? I mean, I, I, I don't think even so, know. yeah. Surely, yeah. Like, let the people yeah. eat. I think it, we're just in a fast-paced job, so obviously you just kind yeah. of nip out for lunch when you can, kind of eat at your desk. We're not really meant to. We're meant to be down using our yeah. nice new hub, which oh, yeah. has been created for us. But I think... Do you feel yeah. like you just can't afford to let that time go? Oh, to a degree, yeah. I think it just, like you said, when you're working in a really fast-paced environment, you really feel like you, it's not enough hours in the day sometimes. But I've, I've tried to get into the habit more yeah. often, even if it's just heading out for 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. I think now head. it's sunny yeah, it's as well. Like, you don't want to be like you know inside when it's gorgeous outside. So That's you know, true. Yeah. I feel like British weather doesn't lend itself to like a long one hour. Of exactly. Time. But if you could like do a gym class or go exactly. for a little run yeah. or something, mm. I guess that's quite a good It's use a good of thing time. to do, definitely. Yeah. But I think, yeah, now we've got the new Gales around the corner. I know we've spoken about it. No, so I feel like <laughs> I've every... been going there either, yeah. not because of your brainwashing, just <laughs> no. like, I'm like, oh, Gales, familiar. But I feel yeah. like everyone in the office is now kind of like oh, excited pop. about lunch and kind of mm. nipping out a bit more than we used to. So that's only yeah. a good thing. Yeah, I, I think it's very Gales. good to change your scene. You probably get a bit more creative when you yeah. come back. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and finally, Queen Letitia of Spain was spotted wearing, shock horror, the same evening dress for the third time. Obviously not shock horror, because I assume we all rewear our evening wear. Definitely. Do we? Of course. Yeah, I mean, I definitely do. I have a lot of sequins, uh, which I was actually probably classed as like Monday wear. Yeah, I was going to say, not necessarily No, but I do think that the press is really harsh on any kind of royal celebrities mm -hmm. when they're re-wearing something. Firstly, in this day and age where we're talking about the planet and how we should be more eco-friendly, etc., absolutely you should be re-wearing well, that outfit. Should be celebrating. Her. Yeah, right. oh, not that we're definitely. not. Definitely, like I agree with you. Yeah, but also I just think like if you love something, you want to wear it of again. Course, of course, so why not? Yeah, and really they're just agree. people too. <laughs> just, you know, yeah. yeah, so odd. Yeah, this fascination with like we've seen it. celebrities as well. I mean, they're relentless. They'll change a few times a day sometimes yeah. when they, mm. if they're on a press junket or something. Mm -hmm. But I assume they're not buying it. They're borrowing at least. Yeah. So it's not this kind of. I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah, if you bought something, you know, I think everyone, if you've got loads of weddings and things in the summer, you might buy one dress and try and wear well, see, it at various different that. things. Oh, I see, definitely see, I would. <laughs> that is, that's something, if I'm doing, I would probably wear things within maybe eight months, maybe a year of each other. Oh. But you're right, if you style it differently. Yeah, or, or, or you're with different crowds. people, like, I, I mean, yeah. I had two weddings the last two weekends and I wore the same dress because yeah. the only person who was the same was my husband, let's be honest. Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, and you're really observant on that stuff. Yeah. Watching back now in the joke. Anyway, <laughs> but the point is, I was like, it so doesn't, but I wouldn't yeah. if it was the same crowd yeah, for the next yeah. week. Mm. Otherwise, you're really not getting cost per wear with evening, like yeah. the dressier stuff. That's yeah. the expensive stuff. Yeah. Polly, your view? Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like if you're going to fork out for a nice dress, I want to get my wear out mm -hmm. of it. I'm not going to stash it away for another year, but yeah, I wouldn't maybe go to a wedding a week later with the same crowd, but would yeah. you, um, what do you feel like the pressures of social media? make you almost fit, like if you're going to document what you're wearing, that can add or change your viewpoint mm. on if you're going to wear it again. Yeah, I would say for, for me, yeah, because that is, you know, people notice as well if you're wearing things. Yeah. They're like, hey, I just saw you in yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, and then they think, oh, you've worn that two days in a row. And I'm like, actually, I just wore it to film that video. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Still got the tag in it. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't smell, <laughs> promise. Yeah. And also we should note there's all those wonderful hiring sites now yeah. for yeah. like, that you can re, you borrow, like, Use it, send it back. They could, you mm. talked about some. Yeah, so I've tried out a couple. I'm going to be writing a piece for Sarah oh, right. about it. Um, I'm definitely tempted but it's, to take it, a look. It's such a great concept for sustainability, but also being able to wear like high end brands maybe yeah. that you can't afford to buy yourself. So there's a site called Her, so H U R R, and another one called The Endless Wardrobe that I've tried, and they're both fantastic. So I would check mm. that, that out. I think, I think that's, that's a great way of doing it if do. you do feel like you don't want to rewear. But follow Queen Letitia and wear mm. it. Just wear mm -hmm. it. All right, that's it for now. Don't go anywhere, though, because I'm going to be back ch chatting beauty with Lisa very soon.
Now, regular Sherlux viewers will know that no one knows beauty quite like Lisa Potter Dixon, the revered makeup artist and Sherlux contributor, is here today to give us a sneak peek at the products that she has in her makeup bag and that she's relying on this summer. So let's open up that beautiful, we'll talk about the bag yes. first and then let's crack on inside. These are genius, they're from Space NK and they're travel bags and it means that you don't have to use those annoying plastic bags at the and airport. And decant quickly. Oh, my God. And like you have enough to do, like necking your water, you've also <laughs> got to do that. Yeah. So true. So it's gorgeous and it looks great, um, but there's a lot in here, there's a lot. It looks very Hermes, I must say. Doesn't it actually? I mean it's the colour, but still I think yeah. it's a very chic bag. Very yeah. chic, very. So I've got another orange thing straight yeah, away yeah. in there actually as we open up. Um, um, so I'm really, I, I love colour. She says wearing black today. Yeah, I really see a pop me. coming through there. Oh yeah, <laughs> my casual sports bra. <laughs> but the old Kiko um, collections are amazing, and this is a new one of theirs, and it's called Beyond Limits. Look at the colours in here. They are stunning, but you've also got a lot of neutrals. So these, for I think about twelve quid. I'll have a look for you as you talk. But for me, it's the pigment on these as well. I mean, uh, six fifty was twelve ninety now. Nine. Oh is that six fifty? Well, what a bargain! That is a bargain. We're well, getting nine colours in here. You've got quid each. That, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> but you've got really gorgeous sheens of colour, metallic finishes as well, which is really nice for summer. And then you've got that pop of colour. And yeah. You know, for you, this would be gorgeous, actually. Really? Wet the brush. Go on. Dampen the brush, dip it into the blue, and then just use it as a liner or even under the eyes, like a smoky under eye liner. What, that would that be. That colour. Yes. I look amazing on you. Oh, I never wear colour. I'm next, so dull. Next time we'll have to do that. All we'll right. Do that. <laughs> a little makeover. So that's always nice. I love to change up palettes, particularly when do they're Do you? And for price. summer, you're just like, great, I'll use that for a few weeks, yeah. see how it goes. Yeah, definitely. And then for the other thing I change up quite a lot is my mascara, as we're talking about eyes. And this is the Laura Mercier Caviar Vol Volume Mascara. And is that quite new? Because I feel like yeah. I've seen things about it. Yeah, it Go is on, really new. Talk to me. Well, I am really fussy about mascara. I think it is one of those products that when it's right, it's so important because it makes such a difference. It does. It's like face changing. It is. It is. Now, you like a bristle oh, I brush, love right? A bristle Have brush. a little look at that. Well, I like that it's all curved. Yeah, it's got this kind of 360 curve thing. I feel like this is what you would do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a vlogger. This is the one. Such a beauty vlogger. <laughs> but you see how there's not a lot of excess product on it? At all? Yeah, no. So that you're is... not doing that clean off business all the time. Right, which is so annoying because then it ends up over your face. In a way, it's really feathery. I've got it on and it gives you that feathery Yeah, they're beautiful. Volume. Yeah. And you, that's what, it doesn't give you that spider lash. It just gives you beautiful feathers. Can you build it to make it a bit thicker yeah. as well? Oh, I don't I know if it's got like conditioner in it, but I feel like it must have some sort of vitamin B5 because it's not dry on the lash at all, Ooh. which is another pet. So it doesn't flake off? No flakiness. Wow, this is brilliant. Yeah. So that is a good one. Caviar noch. 22 quid though. But that's that's in the ballpark, isn't it? Premium um, mascara. Yeah, fair enough. Kind of standard. Should we talk about skin? Always. This, I don't know why I hadn't found this before. Firstly, it's called Millennial Skin. So apt. Want, like, millennial Skin. But it's by Dolce & Gabbana. That sounds fancy. It, it, and also, I never really thought about using their makeup. Yeah, right. You don't really associate them with makeup. No, I'm like, give me a nice bow for my hair. <laughs> yeah. But have a look at this in the back of your hand. Now, this is, it's almost like, it's a tinted moisturiser. I would say stroke foundation because it gives oh, yeah, you that. yeah, it's light enough that it's not. Yeah. But what it does is it gives you this beautiful glow to oh, your God, skin. God, I can't get over myself. I'm like, so... I feel like I've watched too many of your videos on the <laughs> Sherlock channel. <laughs> but, and if you move your hand slightly, you'll see that you get this glow, but it's not too sh shimmery. So you don't need to add any highlight to like in, within it to make it dewy. No, it gives right. you that dewy finish. It gives you that kind of no makeup make. It looks like your skin. Yeah, it spreads nice and thin. Yeah, but it gives you enough coverage. Yeah. So oh, I've got to see my veins. That's exactly. I think it's the biggest the biggest mistake that women make is putting on a foundation that's too heavy for them. Whereas you should do the lighter foundation and then your heavier concealer to cover the problem areas. Right. That's what concealer's for. You you want your skin to look like your skin. But like areas, not the whole. Yeah. Don't blanket away all your Definitely kind of. Definitely not. Oh, I really like that, actually. Great, great for the hotter months. So going on to the concealer, I do use a slightly heavier one. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. An I love classic. a creamy... I won't use this because you obviously dab this on you, but I, that's my favourite type of concealer. Yeah. Yeah. I prefer to a pot one. I love a stick so I can really... 
And then, when you've got nails like mine, you want to... Oh, yeah, you <laughs> cleaning out all day, otherwise. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's really great for precision, but it's got a great coverage to it. But what I find is it brightens at the same time, which is obviously why it's got the radiance element to it. And that is so important. You see the difference between the colour of the concealer and the foundation? Yeah. You want to go a shade or even two shades lighter. Right, that's your really concealer. good. Why, because if it's too dark, you just look cloggy and... I mean, okay. yeah, you want it to be brightened in that whole area. And Do you, would you use that under the eye, or is it too heavy? Under the eye, that's yeah. the main place I would use it. If you had a spot or a blemish? I, you can use this, but I always use a more cream concealer base for that. For that. Anything more liquid based like this, I use underneath the eyes right. only. Okay. I'm learning a lot. Oh, I should you. be making notes here, I'll just watch the show back. I use that every day without fail. Can't live without it. Oh, Best I mean, thing ever. Look, you can I tell. I, I don't swear by any other brands. I don't understand how anyone uses anything else. I love it. I love it. So if you guys haven't tried this, it's the Soleil Tan de Chanel, um, and it is their bronzer. They're really famous for it. It is a real creamy consistency. So we've both got it on now. You can't tell that we've put I on, so on but loads of bronzer. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, I, and let me tell you, I've put on loads of bronzer. I can't function without a lot of bronzer. Right. And but this doesn't feel like I'm caking it onto like that, you know, Guerlain, you know, benefit or hula vibes. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is really creamy. So it just fits and sits on the skin really well. So you don't see it. Which what is brush important. do you, or how do you apply it? Because I, I, that's always my kind of curiosity. Oh, like a proper, a feathery soft yeah, brush? Yeah, I change it. I Does mean, it I not matter? I sometimes use a beauty blender. Fine, okay. Yeah, sometimes I use a brush. It's whatever you prefer, I would say. So that, that's good to know. There's no rules to that no, application. No rules with makeup. Um, then, when it comes to um, blusher, the Charlotte Tilbury, these are new. These are the mm. Glowgasm. And they're... Uh, oh, <laughs> great name. Nars and her. Oh, what no. are they doing? Right, this is, though, a blusher and a highlighter <gasps> in one. I adore that. Multi-use products, first and foremost, are the way forward. They're so quick, they're so easy. You just, I'll pop a little bit on so you can actually see the glow it gives. Got some on already, but the more the merrier. <laughs> Never too much glow. This. We just got the sponge there. And a I tiny just, bit you did. Tiny bit. And it comes in loads of different colours, but this is the pink one. Do they do a peach here too? Yep. Yeah, because I think I like peach. And I don't then, know. But look. Oh, look at that glow? shot. Yes, yeah. I really do. But you have quite glowy skin. Is that fair to say? Because of all this makeup. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. <laughs> so it's why. not like you're naturally the glowiest, or are you? Um, I really look after my skin. Right. Yeah. I do really, really look after it. And I use quite a heavy moisturiser to make sure I get that glow. But something like this is... Good. Brilliant. Okay, I'm really interested yeah, in that too. Really good, really good. Okay, as we're talking about glow, I mean, I, I just love glitter. Do I love you? shimmer. <gasps> oh, can't Glitter myself. though, even when it just goes everywhere. Well, well, it depends what you're using. Okay, fine. So glitter, I'm not using loose glitters. Right. I've got three kind of different types here. I love that. In her summer essentials, <laughs> she's got three types of glitter. I need them all. Okay, yeah, you never know when you're going to end up going to a festival last minute. You know? <laughs> I would love to have your makeup bag there if I did. Right, go on. Genius Glossier Play, the uh, glitter jelly. These are... <gasps> terrifying looking, but... No! It is basically a... It sticks oh, on. Right. So you don't need any glue. And it's different size pigments of glitter, which is going to give you a really nice effect. It doesn't look too much when you've got it on. You can wear it alone or over your eyeshadow. And it just gives the most Would you, wishing. at a festival or something, put it on your cheeks and stuff, that stuff? If I was at a festival, yeah. I'd probably chuck it all over my body. Everywhere. But that stuff's <laughs> a good one for that, because it sticks and it's no faff. Well, it's really great, because if you're going to just put a little bit oh, onto the eyes... In. But every time I wear this, people say to me, what have you got on? Wow, yeah, that is Quick. that is quite a subtle glitter. Intrig like, it's a few little sparkles. A few little sparkles. Um, so that's a really good one. Again, it comes in loads of different colours, but for me, gold is a really wearable colour for every skin tone. So that's that one. Then a classic, the Stila Magnificent Metal Rose Gold Retros. Have you, have, have you tried this? No, but good name recount of that product. That's well, a long name for such a tiny little tub of something. I mean, this is the mini version, oh, right, and okay. I just love it. I really want to put a bit on you, can I? Yes. Yes! I'm so brave yes, today. Yes, so, so all you need to do with this, if you close your eyes, tiny bit in the centre of the eye, just like this. Again, they stick straight on. I use a brush though. And then I'm just using a brush to pat it on and spread it slightly. And I think that this just transforms and enhances your makeup look instantly. Open your eyes. See? You're gonna I'm getting thumbs up. I mean, that, that's not thumb up. You're going to be a, a glitter queen. Oh, that's so in effect. Oh, my eyebrows are wild. You're right. <laughs> oh, my God. The eyebrows we need to get to. I hope you've got a product in there. Ah. Um, that is so... I would even wear that. Yeah, it looks gorgeous on you. Oh, I feel like a bit more like I've got a 
sparkle in exactly. my eye. Exactly. Not on my eye, but in my eye too. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's great. And not all the stuff, so I'll have to look that up. Stella, blah, 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 blah. That's the Stella Magnificent one. Metal. And then, if you want something much more affordable, Revolution, a great brand for affordable products, and the pigments are really great. Where do you get that? This, you can get it in Superdrug. Oh, right, you can get right. it online. Normal. Yeah, just anywhere. But this is the Eye Glisten, and you've got two ends to it. You've got more of a metallic liquid eyeshadow, then you've got more of a metallic shimmer. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is just really easy. You just put it on loads of different colours. Oh, it comes that's in. That's quite pretty, isn't it? That colour. Really soft. A pinky, but yeah, yeah. with a bit of a really look soft. at the other, yeah. Yeah. And then have a look at the other end, and it's got more of a glitter to it. And you get a lot of product. Yeah, I was going to say, that's quite uh, like generous. Quid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, look at that, though. That's gorgeous. More pearly. Check me. I never have thought in a million years I'd even consider stuff like this. But there you go. And something That's like that. so just easy. The, so easy. In the corner of your eyes, just a little boost of colour. Love. I think that a lot of people get afraid of using something that shimmers because they think, I don't want to look like a, a disco ball. I mean, I don't know why, but... <laughs> yeah, <I'm> weirdo. <laughs> but if you just use a tiny little bit, it's going to enhance your look and it almost brings it to life. Yeah. So don't be afraid of that. Okay, talking of brows, <laughs> let me just brush yours back I mean, in place. Shocking. They've been hanging down all day. I'm all not day. Gonna lie. I'm They're not wild. Gonna lie. It's time I go see a professional to like deal with them. It is. I need next the hedge trimmers out. I'll bring my wax kit next time. <laughs> I love it. Um, this is Benefits Precisely My Brow Pencil. It is my all time favourite brow product. It's got an ultra fine tip, which means that you can create hair like strokes with it. Proper feathery hairs. Really feathery. And also, when you've got brows like ours, which are already quite Full. They're there. Well, they are there. And we're lucky, but there is always going to be gaps. Yeah. So you can just fill in, or if you've got no hair, you can create hair like strokes. So you can get that brow look. And it's really easy to use because then you just brush through with a spoolie, it gives you that natural finish. It's just a great product. Do you lock them down as well, though, or not? I use a, a gel afterwards. Do you? Yeah. Like I a do clear use gel. Just a clear yeah, gel. Yeah, fine. Um, so the colour comes from that, not from the gels? No. Right. I mean, it depends. If you've got really fair brows or you want to add more volume, um, you can use a fibre gel, which has got colour in it. But if you're like us and you just want to set your brows in place, then use a clear gel. Okay. But yeah, brows. It's all about brows. All right, and then lastly, I've got some lip products. Yeah, I love one, a lip product. Well, one which, be, you know... It, sold it, out. It's sold out, but I had to show you guys. But we'll start with... <laughs> the, <laughs> you can't it. get You actually can. You said it's coming back. It's coming soon. <laughs> it's it's coming so back. So it's not the end of the world. But lip balm, essential. Essential. Not even... A, especially in the summer, the dry, oh. the air con, like it's all... You're dehydrated, like you need yeah. a lip balm. Have you tried the Sol Janeiro? No, but I feel like I'm forever on the hunt for a good lip balm. Have, have you tried their Brazilian Bum Bum Cream? Oh, yes. Okay, so it's the same brand as that. Okay. This is a lip balm. Firstly, I love how big the actual balm Covered is. Covered in ashes, Just yeah. chuck Get it, it on. on. It smells amazing. Have a smell of it. But, isn't it? I just, it just... That sounds like something Gales would sell. It does smell a bit I don't like a Gales. This cake. is not an ad that's <laughs> sponsored by Gales, but... I think it's the vanilla in it, probably. Oh, that is delicious. Gorgeous. And it's rich, and it just gives you a lovely sheen to your lips. So if you don't want to wear a gloss... You just want to... Yeah. Where do you get that? This can be Cult Beauty. Oh, fine. Get on, yeah. All, all the places. These are really... You used to only be able to get them in America. Right, and brand. that used to be really... Even like that Paw Paw used to be like the hardest yeah. thing to get hold of, and now... Now it's But everywhere. is that your real favourite? Do you think that works? This this I love for, and I use this daily. Before I go to bed, I use pore pore cream. Do you? Yeah, I do because I get really dry lips. And at the moment, I have the fan on because the reason with pore pore cream is I then just smother like it. It's a barrier. Yeah, and I put it around my nose because I've got hay fever, so you get dryness yeah, yeah, around your yeah. nose. So I just put that all over my face. Okay, oh, you must look hot. Honestly, <laughs> luckily I've been my husband 15 years. Right. It's <laughs> like, we'll leave it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then for me, like the star of the show at the moment, <laughs> That's coming back. It's coming back in stock. I've been reassured by Lisa herself. These are the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. Now, firstly, when a makeup artist makes a product, I always think it's going to be amazing. Lisa bought out the first lot of these lipsticks probably about seven, eight months ago, and they sold out straight away. It's oh, so they're very new still to market. Oh, yeah, they're very new. Oh, look at the L there. That's, that's chic, oh, isn't it? Oh, my God. This is Rainbow Spill. And that is bold. This, well... You I, like a bold lip. I've got it on now, though. Oh, it's definitely not as bold as that. Well, it, it's because I've just rubbed it in. I've used, you see, I've got my little, I've used oh, a I pencil see. brush. Okay. So you can just put it on normal, if you want, and it is bold. 
but it is this beautiful. Have a bit of back, back of your hand. Have a feel of it. It is a velvet. They're called velvet lipsticks. Oh, super creamy luxe. That is not drying at all. And the pigment is amazing. I'm and it actually. It. Look, it has like velvet going around the lips. Yeah, that looks so expensive. Oh, How much is it. that? I just love it. 26 premium, but that's great pigment. Like you'd use that. That would be like a, your Nana would have that forever type. Oh my God, talking to my Nana. That reminds me of my Nana a bit. No, oh God, I'll too. stop crying. I've sent one to my Nana Doris. <laughs> yeah. Nine, she's 90 years of age. She'll love it. Where she'll match her jumper and her earrings and her necklace <laughs> and her nails. Yeah. She will, no, she actually will. But it's just a great product. And as soon as they come back out, I recommend. She's got neutral ones too. She's got reds. But, but there's the feel and the texture and the quality. Some, I mean, they really are some of the best lipsticks, I, lipsticks I've ever used. I'm where do you know where they're? So sorry to keep asking this. Just on LisaEldridge.com. Direct. Okay, yeah, so it's direct. just by her. Yeah, direct. I think like she actually packages them all herself and her oh, team. I'm in love with Lisa. Oh, honestly, seriously. What a dream. So I think that's everything. I mean, I could chat and make up with you all day, but we do have to leave it there because otherwise this show no will be a very, very long <laughs> one. We are out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. As no always, Lisa, I'm going to be back though right after the break with Top Life Coach to give us her tips on how to live your best life. There's no one quite like Glossier. It's huge. It's taken over the world. It's created by Emily Vice, found at Open to Gloss, and it's amazing. The products are amazing. Hey, what product are you using? Glossier Boy Brow. My absolute brow hero. I've just done the mascara. What do you think of it? I think it's amazing. It's brilliant. I absolutely love it. I've got it on now. See the product really well. Yeah. See the colour okay in it? Yeah, actually. lovely. It's going to just tip your hand that way because there's a light catching that later. Hi, I'm Lee Thornley, and I'm the founder of Burton May. Hi. Iconic Burton May tiles are really things like this. Anyone that's been on Instagram really is like these. They're cool, are they? That. Pink basin. That is very cool. How do these look all in one? You can put another dark. Fine. Yeah, I really love that. Probably our most difficult tile to make. Where are we? We're at MS. Our readers love MS. I'm not only concerned about you and your camera. So you eat. need to keep a low profile, okay? Or this might not work out. Hello, that's quite nice. A bit boring. Yeah, it's a bit boring. I like that. Okay, let's go upstairs and make careful. I like that colour. They're quite chic, aren't they? Let's try one of those. You end up with a lot of stuff, I can tell. Okay. <laughs> There you go, m &S. you can come shopping with the trolleys. I mean, you know I look good in a hat. Yeah, but a slogan hat, really. It's making content, right? Heels. They're £19.50. These shorts are amazing. Oh my god, I love it. How good is this colour? It's another cashmere jumper. An ultimate. What are the wines that we've got? It's rose, this is Sauvignon Blanc. This is more of a spritz. Rose and raspberry. Semi sparkling white wine. I'm all over this one. That I'm hoping. Position myself at the right end. This <laughs> is the expensive end. The only red wine. Mirabeau rose, sparkling white, which it? comes in this cute little pack. So, I'll try this one. Yeah, and I'll try it. It smells alright, actually. Cheers. How does it taste? Yeah, it's nice. Mm. If I was having a picture. Now, Noor Hibbert has a degree in psychology, a post-grad diploma in business and executive coaching, and describes her wish it, mission to help women reach their full wish potential and transform their lives professionally and personally so that they become the happiest person they know. That's a great mission. She's written a book just about how to do that, really. It's called... Just fucking do it. Oh, and it yeah. comes out on the 11th of July. You are bold and I like it. Welcome to the Sheer Luck Show, Noor. Thank you. And I quite like wishing. It's like a wish mission. Okay. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Let me tell you, my brain and words, they just don't match up. I need to stop making mistakes. Amazing. I'm going to get sacked any minute. Right. No, you're not. Just tell us, what is the key to being happy? Well, that's a totally massive, loaded question. Let's do the first one. But, but, let's, but let's go. Yeah, let's let's. Go in there deep, right? What's the key to being happy? Well, I truly believe the key to being happy is number one, is stopping and becoming aware of the person you've become to this very day. So many humans will go through life on autopilot and wonder why their life is the way that it is. And they don't stop to question, wait a minute, how have I got here? And I think the key to being happy is stopping recognizing do you mean that sorry in a positive way or more in a negative no, in way? a negative way as in you know humans we are conditioned from yay big we take in we, we you know we model we see our parents modeling things we learn from other people's experiences we're little sponges and then we create belief systems those belief systems become the philosophy or paradigm for our life and for so many people it ain't positive and so we wake up we got eat sleep work repeat you know and then some people wake up and go Oh, I'm not actually happy, but they don't know why. The key to being happy is stopping, turning your gaze inward rather than outward, because as humans, we're always looking for the outside thing to make us happy. And realizing, and I guess blame. Yeah, but realizing actual true happiness comes from inside and realizing that you have a choice to be happy in every given moment. So the key to being happy is actually realizing you have a choice to live your life however you want. 
gosh. Even though at times, I guess it could feel like you don't like there's pressures Absolute. around you. But oh my gosh, absolutely. I mean, inside my book, there's a whole chapter called "Say Boo to the Bullshit," and it's about. I'm loving this, like foul mouth. Not really. Yeah, but no. you know. Oh no! Oh you're yeah. You're direct. Oh like, no! You're listen. not being around the bush here. You're going straight to it. L listen, the thing is, is that is that yeah okay I do you like to drop the odd F-bomb? But you know what, people like that because people see coaches and psychologists and counselors that are all very la di da and it's all very proper. But let's be honest, loads of people are wearing masks to be that person in a professional environment. They go home and they're effing and blind and you know, drinking a bottle of gin like, way. why can't we just be who we are in every facet of our life? That's that's happiness. It's, I can be me right now with you. I'm the same me at home with my kids without minus the swearing. Hopefully, okay. yeah. Occasionally. <laughs> they're like, Mummy, what's this word? Yeah. <sighs> um, so, but that, that, that truly is, is. It's the key to recognising I can just be me wherever I want in my life. So, yeah. Bold, bold. But, yeah, say boo to bullshit is about recognising how you have been programmed to be the way that you are today through conditioning. Okay, so... You're obviously quite a confident person. Well, I'm getting that vibe from now. I don't know, maybe when we get off camera or not. But were you always like this, or did you have to turn yourself around too? As it Absolutely. Were? So, growing up, um, I wasn't that. I, I, I always had a bubbly disposition, right? I was always quite, you know, told to talk too much at school. Listen, teachers, I make a living out of talking now. Um, <laughs> Me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's good. Um, but. Um, you know, growing up, no, I didn't. Um, from a very young age, I lived in Wimbledon, which back, you know, when I was five years old, was very white. It was very affluent. And I was one of probably a couple, if not, you know, very, very few, the people weren't t totally white, you know, because I'm Middle Eastern. And, and I remember a girl coming up to me, like it was yesterday, in the playground. Why are your eyebrows so bushy and why are you so ugly? And she sounds like a nice girl. Well, little kids just don't yeah. realise, you know, they don't realise, they just see the facts and that's their, their perception. And I remember thinking, gosh, like, why am I different? And that slowly dampened my bubbliness and years went past. I went off to high school and I got bullied and then my confidence went and consistently felt this inner conflict of where do I fit in? Who am I? I was trying to be the perfect daughter for my parents, trying to be the perfect student for the teachers, trying to be the cool girl and fit into whichever gang. One day I was a goth, next day I was, you know, wearing pedal pushes and big earrings. Like, it was whatever I needed to do to fit in. And that creates depression and it creates anxiety. And I suffered from both of them. And so, does it mean that I didn't have days where I was happy or bubbly? It just meant that I was consistently battling with an undercurrent of, I'm not happy. And I don't know where I fit in. So, no, my biggest change has happened in the last sort of six years. Wow, so very recent. You yeah. kind of had the epiphany. Yeah, well, it was when I gave birth to my daughter, uh, my first daughter. Right, so tell us a little bit about that and how your daughters have influenced and impacted your view of happiness in life. Absolutely. So, number one, I've got three daughters, three crazy children. No, I love them. They are crazy. But... Um, in the most beautiful way because girls just grow in, like they're just little divas and they're just so full of questions such as like, mummy, why is the F word? What does it mean? Nothing. So if it doesn't mean anything, why can't I use it? Ah, oh, damn, yeah. got me there. Um, so um, when I gave birth to my eldest daughter, Layla Rose, who's now six and a half, she'll be seven in September. So really my journey started almost seven years ago, really. Um, I'd worked abroad for six years as a Club 1830 rep. Uh, because that's what you do when you love partying and you're lost. You get on a plane and you go somewhere and you pretend that like, real life doesn't happen. I worked my way up and when I fell pregnant with my uh, eldest, I actually had to quit my job. Not because they made me, they actually told me I could go back and promoted me. But obviously, walking around Magaluf with a massive tummy <laughs> didn't quite rock my boat. And late nights and yeah, booze, oh my it's God. just not the right environment. No, it's not the right environment for a pregnant person. So I ended up kind of going back to scratch and feeling really lost. But when I gave birth to my daughter, something happened in me. Something just clicked and it was like, girl, you've got to step your game up because you are now a role model. And, you know, I wanted so much for that little girl. And I was like, I can't be messing around now. Now it's time to show them, you know, what to do with life. And at that point, I didn't even know what that looked like for me. But it was just a, it's got to happen now. Wow, that's amazing. What a be prepared. 
It's my second. Oh. I haven't stepped up yet, but I will. <laughs> I'm stepping up for all you kids out there. Um, okay, so if you're having a bad day, though, how do you pick yourself up? Or in what do you do to make yourself feel confident that day? What, what tips can you give viewers? Because I guess that's the point of this, because obviously go get the book. But yeah, what can we give them as bite-sized tips now? Well, of course, yeah, in the book, there's so many different things I do share. But what's one of my favorite things to do is shift your energy. So when you're feeling like, oh, Debbie Downer, or something's not right, or something's not gone your way, or you feel anxious, or you feel stressed out about something, change your environment immediately. Because you can get so stuck in your own head and where you are at then. Go for a walk, put music on. Beyonce always works for everybody. Or Lizzo Juice is like my fave. Like, get out of the funk tune um, and listen to music and just shift the energy space. Walk away, get out of your own head and witness, wait a minute, if I was observing this situation, let me ask myself truly what's happening here. And that, by the way, that comes through a level of self-awareness that a lot of people don't have. But you will after you read the book. Um, <laughs> but it's about saying, look, is this situation, you know, is it running me? Because a lot of us things think these things happen to us and we're out of control of them. But for me, if anything kind of affects me, and by the way, it does, I'm not impenetrable, I'm a human, I can stop and look at myself and go, wait a minute, Noor, you are in control here. You can choose to feel this way or choose not to. Shift your energy, go for a walk, go to yoga, put music on, and pretty quickly I've shifted. Okay, so that's a really good tip. Just take deep breath, change your environment. Change your environment, yeah. Get physical as well. Like, actually move your body. So you talk about a lot about the universe being your biggest yeah. friend. And I, that's kind of, you know, obviously a lot of people do talk about the universe and asking it things, yeah. full of things. What does it mean? How do you make it work for you? How do you really do that without kind of... Sounding you know, like a cuckoo, a no, woo-woo. I didn't say Or it. a weirdo. <laughs> Listen, I am like team weirdo now <laughs> and I am proud. Um, because honestly, if you came to me six years ago and said the word meditate, I would have been like, oh God, don't say that, that's so cringy. If you'd even said the word universe to me or the word spiritual, I would have shuddered and walked away because I was consistently trying to be normal and ordinary for my whole life. And guess what? It didn't work. And when I sort of started my journey of self-development, I started to read these books and everyone was talking about the universe and law of attraction. And at that point, I was like, you know what? There was just a little something in me that said, listen to this. There's, there's something in this. Did you have a fear if you did it and it didn't work that you'd what? then be... I know what you've got to lose then. But yeah, you haven't you know. got anything to lose, right? Yeah. And I think for me, the, the first time I really started to put it in action was when I was sat in my car outside my daughter's nursery. I dropped her off because I had to go back to a job that I hated. She was 14 months pregnant. And I Old. Was, I hope uh, she sorry, sorry, sorry. I always say Pregnant that. Pregnant nursery is like a really <laughs> See, hard life. baby <laughs> brain doesn't stop even after seven years. Um, so um, she was 14 months old and I was sat in my car and I was crying my eyes out. She was crying. It was like the worst separation anxiety. And I remember just sat in my car outside the nursery looking up at the sky and I was like, I don't know what's out there. God, <laughs> universe, whatever. Just help me out here. Because, you know, prior to that, I was on 138 quid maternity pay. Uh, sort of, you know, government, whatever they give you. Um, my husband was earning £1,200 a month as a bricklayer. We couldn't live the life of Riley, so I went back to my job, but I hated it. Um, and so, for me, it was like, just somebody help me. Yeah. And give me I, a sign or yeah, guide just, me what? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't even remember exactly what I said, but somebody help me, right? So then, anyways, we... Because since that moment, my life has so radically changed, I started to just do things more consciously. Like I remember asking for 500 quid a month and then an email popping into my inbox that said, want to make an extra 500 quid a month? I was like, oh, <gasps> wow, this works. That was the beginning. And I share a lot more about those stories inside the book in a bit more depth. But you know, you just thought I'm going to try and do it and see what happens. And then I, or did you believe, myself. yeah, did you, oh, I didn't believe at the beginning. It was more like game playing. I talk about that chapter one, role play with the universe. Go on, just test it out. I bet you, I bet you get a sign. I do this with thousands of women across the world. I get thousands of comments going, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, because it works. Unequivocally works. We're care. all like, ah, oh, what should I oh, ask for? Oh, well, yeah. So yeah. No, but it's, it's very interesting. Definitely mm. reading this book, by the way. Okay, so just finally, because we are, I mean, I could talk to you all day too. I could talk to lots of people all day as well. And <laughs> um, why do you think then, well, why do you think self love so important for success? And I guess, therefore, are you your biggest inspiration or who is or what is? Absolutely not. So my biggest inspiration is actually my kids right now because 
I believe kids are given to you as mirrors to how you can become the best version of yourself. They're consistently teaching you how to be better and how to be I a better role model. I actually fully agree with yeah. you on that. At the moment, I'm being like, ooh, checking myself way more yeah. when he questions why I did something. I'm like, 100%. you're right. Um, and I think self-love is the new sexy. I think we're in an age with social media, in an age where women are just from a really young age, really young age, fall out of love with themselves. And the number one thing we're taught that being loving yourself is bad, it's egotistical, it's narcissistic, it's absolute and utter, excuse my French, bollocks. Until we love ourselves, we cannot create success in our lives because we will always self-sabotage ourselves because we will always think we're not enough. And that is the common denominator amongst every single woman that I meet that's got a problem is they don't think they're enough of something clever, pretty, skinny, whatever. So self-love comes first and everything else comes next. And is this a problem for women more? I think it's everybody. I think, you do think I, it's oh, men oh my God, well. I think it's men as well. But just generally, I only work with women majority. So okay. I can't talk about the male population, although I know it's the same thing. Yeah, you think it's the oh, same. Yeah, it's the same Self-sabotage, pesky business, isn't it? It is. Set out to ruin everything. Yeah. All right, finally, because I know I said finally then, but if you have one piece of advice for our viewers right now, other than get the book, because, you know, obviously, yeah. that that's saying, what would you say? When you go on this journey of self-help, don't buy books and leave it on the shelf. That's shelf help. Take the action, read the books, get involved. Everyone that pre-orders my book actually gets exclusive eight weeks of free coaching with me inside of Facebook group because I truly want people to take the action. There's tasks, there, tasks at the end of every single chapter called the JFDI tasks. Do them, make practices, change your life because I promise you one thing, I can come to you in a year's, year's time, your life can be radically different. You can be making more money, healthier, better relationships, but it only happens if you actually take the action. God, I feel like we're all inspired in here. I hope you're all inspired too, watching. I'm definitely inspired. Thank you so much, Noel, so for welcome. coming in. Um, we definitely could all do with someone like you in our lives. Luckily, you can have part of her in your life. Get the book, Just Fucking Do It, out on the 11th of July. Um, thank you so much, Noel, and to Lisa, of course, and of course, the Sheer Lux ladies, as always. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell your friends. We're going to be back with the show on Thursday. Bye-bye for now.